The only thing more bizarre than a 16 foot or nearly five meter tall statue depicting a five-legged human-headed bull with wings, which by the way was carved out of one massive piece of stone weighing some 40 imperial tons or 80,000 pounds. Yes, the only thing stranger than this statue and the few others like it is how and where they found them. Buried and consumed in earth, almost as if they were devoured by some sort of cataclysmic mud flood-like event. These spectacular yet ominous wing bull sculptures are known as the Lamassu and are among the remnants of the Assyrian Empire which made up the heart of ancient Mesopotamia or are commonly referred to as the Fertile Crescent. And I have to say, the only thing more bizarre than the statues themselves or how and where they found them, which I'll be discussing more of in just a moment, but the only thing more bizarre than all of that is the deliberate, continued, and systematic destruction of ancient Iraq, which, let's not forget, just so happens to be the very land that has long been referenced as the so-called Cradle of Civilization, the very place where the Sumerians emerged. And when I say systematic destruction of ancient Iraq, wait until you see and hear what I'm going to show you later in this video, because if you thought that these were nothing more than a number of angry, violent, stupid people bent on destruction or some jaded religious crusade, I regret to tell you that that is not the case. And rather, something far more nefarious took place to orchestrate their methodical destruction, which you'll find to be quite disturbing. In fact, I'd even venture to say that once you hear and see what I'm about to show you, it's just one of those things that you'll never forget. Now, before I get to that, let me first share a few fascinating things to lead up to it. And I must say that I am still pinching myself when I reflect on that I was one of so few people to ever see and touch these Lamassu statues in person during my nearly year-long deployment to northern Iraq in 2009 and 2010, including being stationed at Ford Operating Base in the city of Mosul, which is in the modern-day location of ancient biblical city of Nineveh. Those of you who have followed me for some time have heard me share this unique experience before, as I happen to be at the right place and at the right time to have this once-in-a-lifetime encounter. And although my thoughts on the invasion of Iraq have evolved significantly in the years following, and you know what, screw it, I'll just be blunt. I had volunteered after 9-11, and then later on I had believed that I was going to go and liberate the Iraqi people. But after some time, I eventually figured out that I had been egregiously lied to by the various powers that be. And ultimately, the invasion of Iraq was unjustified, illegal, and one massive crime against humanity. But all those wonderful thoughts aside, I am nonetheless selfishly grateful that I was afforded the unlikely chance to visit a site that countless researchers, historians, and archaeologists from around the world had long sought to visit firsthand but couldn't as it was virtually off limits for decades. And unfortunately, any opportunity there once was has since passed, as back in 2014, these statues attained global attention when ISIS invaded northern Iraq and completely decimated this entire site, which made up the gates of Nergal. I remember watching this on the news when it happened and being in total disbelief that this was occurring at the exact same place that I had been. Now, this particular statue here is from that same location, but has resided at the Oriental Institute Museum at the University of Chicago since 1930. And I had the great pleasure of visiting during a trip to Chicago, and I have to say that this is one little known gem of a museum. And if you ever find yourself in Chicago, which, by the way, is a lovely town, this museum is a must visit, as they have an astonishing set of artifacts that are amongst the oldest and rarest from all of ancient human civilizations. They even have a wonderful collection from ancient Egypt as well. In fact, they have more than 5,000 total artifacts in the museum on display, and you could spend hours and hours looking at everything they have on exhibit. And although 5,000 artifacts is a lot, it is sadly only a small percentage of the more than 350,000 total relics they have in this museum's catalog. Do the math, and that is actually less than 1.5% of their total inventory. 
I feel that that's worth mentioning because it is unfortunately the case at most any museum as a vast majority of all the artifacts ultimately sit forgotten within their dusty boxes down in the bowels of museum basements. What I wouldn't do to go take a gander through their archives. But that aside, this statue is one of so few that remain in the world today. However, you can still find a few others scattered throughout the world, including at the Iraq Museum in Baghdad, a few at the Louvre in France, which, by the way, I really want to go to, and a couple more at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. I am pleased to mention, though, that these artifacts were not stolen, and they were actually given to the Oriental Institute by the countries they originate from, at least in a few examples that I had read about, particularly this statue. They were essentially given as gifts for helping to excavate these remarkable sites. Now, you have to see this in person to truly grasp its size and eminence. I'm 5 foot 10 or 178 centimeters, and what I saw in person with my own eyes was truly something else. The very shoulder of just one of its legs is above my head, and when you're up close, you understand what a behemoth this thing is. The torso itself is so large that you cannot observe the entirety unless you take at least a few steps back. And keep in mind that all of these photos you're seeing were captured on ultra-wide camera lens, which thus distorts the true depth and width. Pictures simply do not do this thing justice for what your eyes witness firsthand. And by the way, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it has five legs. You see four of them when viewing it from the side, which gives the statue the appearance of essentially walking forward. However, when you view it from the front, you'll see the fifth leg, and the bull at that time appears to just be standing still. It's, it's incredible. And this precision of this stone is nothing short of excellent. The nuanced details ranging from the feathers to the braided beard and all of its curls, as well as its lips and eyes, and by the way, notice that it also has ears of a bull as well. And observe the fine cuneiform script written in between the legs. There is just so much focused detail to this beautiful statue that when you're in front of it, you know you're in the presence of greatness. And although it has a rather striking or ominous look to it, I felt delighted to be within its company. And to help us further appreciate what an undertaking it would have been to create this thing, you should know that what this statue has survived over the course of thousands of years. Besides the fact that it was buried following whatever happened to it in order to break it in half in the first place, in fact, when they excavated it, they found that it was broken into one dozen pieces. Which is so interesting because, again, what type of forces would have been involved to break this thing apart to that extent? But its burial and mud aside, you'll further appreciate the precision carved into the hardness of this stone when you learn that following its excavation, a building literally fell on top of it, yet caused so little damage to all the subtle details. This thing was built to last, and every bit of the precision would certainly have been challenging, especially when you consider the unbelievably strong nature of this type of stone. Simply compare it to one that was destroyed in a rock and just see how difficult it was to do so, despite taking a literal jackhammer to do it. But I digress for a moment, and going back to the statue in Chicago, you'd hardly realize the damage it endured unless you observe it from the back, where you can see how they pieced it together using gypsum. And speaking of the back of it, keep in mind that this statue once lined the walls of the throne room to King Sargon II, which brings me back to the question as to how and why it was destroyed and consumed in Earth in the first place, because history suggests that although Mesopotamia was made up of multiple empires, such as the Sumerians, the Assyrians, and Babylonians, there still would have been an overall continuity of civilization itself, and that no cataclysmic event uh, would have differentiated the changes in empires and governments, at least not that we are aware of. So it makes me wonder why they would have allowed such an impressive palace, which, by the way, was said to be one of the most spectacular ever created up until that point. So why would they have allowed the sands of time to just consume it? That is unless something else we may not be aware of could have facilitated its quick burial. That's a question. I, I just don't know. But I do have questions about the nature in which they they found these ruins. But if there is one question related to these statues, it's why was there such an orchestrated attempt to ensure that so many of them would be destroyed? I mean, when you look at the specifics of the ISIS invasion of Iraq, it was nothing short of sophisticated. 
Those who chose to annihilate this site went totally out of their way to do so, and not only that, they went to the challenging extent of bringing in heavy equipment to accomplish the task. Make no mistake, this was a highly coordinated undertaking, and not done so at the behest of a bunch of stupid idiots behaving like fools, exhorting some sort of perverted false ideology. No, there is far more to this than meets the eye. And this is the part that I alluded to earlier in the video involving a conspiracy to destroy ancient Iraq. We all recognize this guy, don't we? And although I have no doubt that this man is guilty of a few things, but the one thing I heard him say when addressing the ISIS of invasion of Iraq and all the destruction that followed, he stated something to the media that so few people have ever heard. So here is a minute and a half clip from 2015, which is absolutely worth watching. And just listen to what he had to say in the context of the creation of ISIS and their invasion of Iraq, as it's very, very important. So here we go. <laughs> Вот э, президент Обама упомянул о, об одной из угроз, это ИГИЛ. Ну а кто помогал вооружать людей, которые э, в Сирии боролись с, э, с Асадом? -то? Кто создавал благоприятный политический информационный климат? Кто подталкивал к поставкам оружия? А вы чего, разве вы не понимаете, кто там воюет? Там воюют наемники, в основном. Вы знаете, что там платят деньги? И они воюют там, где платят больше. Вот они вооружились, им платят ну, определенную сумму. Мне даже называли эти суммы, которые им платят. Они там воюют уже с оружием, все, у них уже не отнимешь. Потом выяснилось, что в другом месте чуть-чуть на себя больше платить. Они там туда перетекут. Вот э, они захватили месторождения нефтяные, там, скажем, э, где-то в Ираке или в Сирии. Нефть начали добывать. У них эту нефть покупают, транспортируют, продают. Почему санкции не накладывают на, на всех, кто это делает? А что, разве Соединенные Штаты не знают, кто это делает? You know, I hate to admit it, but he's telling the truth. And what he said was something I had already concluded way before he had ever said it. In fact, when ISIS first invaded Iraq, I remember talking to a buddy over the phone who I deployed with, and we both came to the same conclusion that these are mercenaries. Like this is, this is not a pack of just religious extremists that are like out to break something and, and take over a piece of land. This was so sophisticated, I mean, I saw and I understood that these are legitimately mercenaries. They are far too sophisticated in the context of military movement, and it was done so in a matter, manner that exceeded the sloppiness of an angry, violent group of religious extremists, like I mentioned. This was a legit military operation, and many people who have never served in combat operations do not realize the multiple facets of discipline as well as communications involved for it to function as such, but more so than that, these people went out of their way to completely massacre the peaceful populace of Yazidi people that made up that region. They killed the men and the children and took the women as their slave wives. This happened, everyone in the know knew it, it was all over the news at the time, and the rest of the world didn't seem to care. And the reality is that anyone that would massacre innocent people, including children, and then kidnap and rape their own, you know, a, to take a slave wife. That type of person is a complete and total psychopath. And you know what? That is what a mercenary army looks like. The types of people that would literally kill innocent people for money are the types of people that would choose to become mercenaries in the first place. These people committed literal genocide. And I have to say that it's depressingly remarkable to see how few people cared about this despite it again being all over the news to anyone that was paying attention. But on top of all of that, just to point out another fact which tells us that the ISIS invaders were actual mercenaries paid by someone, when you consider the significant fact that so many of them were using American-made M4s and M16s instead of the AK-47. That right there is highly telling and only further validates Putin's alluding statements that they were paid and armed by others. So yeah, I believe him. And the very look and tone on his voice and his face 
when he said that screamed of the truth. And by the way, a side point, but ever since he declared Monsanto a terrorist organization and all the efforts he made to rid his country of non-organic and GMO foods, I knew that there was more to this guy than what the media would let the masses believe. I mean, I'm not some Putin apologist, but I seek the truth from anyone that would dare speak it. And going back to his specific Iraq comments, the very fact that once ISIS took over, they began selling more oil than Iraq had ever done so in its history is unbelievably significant because think about it. This was not some group of stupid extremists. These people, psychopaths as they were, were clearly having their strings pulled by powers operating in the shadows and far above them. I'm telling you, this whole thing was highly sophisticated and methodical and is in every sense a true conspiracy. So the question for me now becomes, why did whoever that had the power to orchestrate the invasion itself and the subsequent destruction, why did they choose to ensure that these ancient biblical sites would be erased from history forever? And you want to hear something else that's creepy? The purpose of these Lamassu statues were said to be protective deities meant to keep demonic entities away. So it's quite interesting that the closest thing to an actual demonic force would indeed seek out to obliterate them in such purposeful fashion. Interesting, right? I'll be very curious to hear what everyone else's thoughts are on all of this, whether it's just the statues themselves, which are spectacular, but also the clear intention to destroy these sites within ancient Iraq. Many people have pr proposed conspiracies in the past involving certain ancient human history relics in Iraq and Afghanistan that some have suggested was the one of the purposes for going in there in the first place. It's hard to tell what's true and what isn't, but all I know is that there's something to this situation that makes my eyebrow go up. So that said, hit the like button and subscribe. I have more interesting videos to come and leave a comment sharing your thoughts on any and all of the things discussed in this video. But that said, my name is Jimmy Corsetti. My channel is called Bright Insight and stay tuned to another fascinating video. Take care, everybody.